Hi guys, Jennifer LeClaire here, senior leader at the Awakening House of Prayer, founder of the Ignite Network. I want to talk to you today about something that I released in my morning prayer call that really struck a chord with so many. It was a prophetic warning, a prophetic revelation about a wicked phenomenon that we're seeing in the body of Christ. Now, this is not new. Uh, this has been going on for some time because I wrote an article. Let me see if I can find the date on this. I wrote an article in 2013. So again, this is not new, but it's escalating. The article was titled, Why So Many Christians why are so many Christians practicing witchcraft? Why are so many Christians practicing witchcraft? Now, in conjunction with that, I want to sort of back up just a moment. When I was in Dallas uh, for a recent mentoring retreat uh, with an apostle from Singapore, uh, the Lord showed me on the last day of the retreat that there had been witches assigned against me. Now, this did not uh, actually startle me. It did not surprise me because I've written so much about Jezebel and I've written about witchcraft. And what I find is when I write about witchcraft, uh, Wiccans, uh, those who are, are actually uh, witches and warlocks, they, they think that I'm talking and targeting them. Uh, so they begin uh, to, to, uh, to lash out against me. Many of them have gone on my mailing list. Uh, they go on my YouTube page. They come on my Facebook page and they'll begin to publicly curse me. And I don't just mean say bad things about me. I mean, releasing actual incantations. They, they, they've, uh, they've said things about my family. They've put curses on my daughter. They've done these things. Now, how many of you know the curse cause list does not stand? Amen. And so we have to understand we have authority over all this, but many times we are experiencing sickness in our body, mind battles, uh, things happening in our finances, things that are unexplainable, just going on. And many times what I've said uh, over and over and over, over and over again, if we are experiencing something for which there is no reason, something that is absolutely unreasonable, just like people going nuts, for example, if, if we're, if, if something is absolutely unreasonable, oftentimes there's a devil behind it. It could just be someone's emotions. I get that. I don't believe everything that happens in the world is a demon. Amen. I don't believe there's a devil behind every doorknob in particular, uh, but I do believe that some doors have more than one devil behind them. Okay. And so the Lord told me uh, when I was there in Dallas, just some weeks ago, I think it was about a month ago now uh, that there were witches assigned against me. And I thought, well, dear God, what's happening now? What did I do now? What did I do to stir them up now? I've, I've, I've written articles about when atheists stir up witches against you. I had many people, uh, maybe it's two years ago, uh, they somehow got my personal phone number and they began to burn up my phone, cursing me, leaving messages, cursing me, cursing me. And, and I don't know how they got my number, but maybe they divined it. Who knows? I know that my God is more powerful. Uh, but in this season, what I've seen is Jezebel and religion, the, the spirit of Jezebel, the spirit of religion are making escalated threats against God's people. Those who are pressing into the kingdom, those who are doing the will of God, those who are uh, refusing to bow, refusing to quit, refusing to back off, there are escalating threats coming against God's people escalating threats. We're seeing a severe threats coming in the spirit. Most of the time I've seen uh, threats, you know, and I, I travel around and sometimes I'll do different teachings and I'll say, how many of you have actually, actually had for real death threats against your life? Like for real, not in the spirit, but for real. And many people will raise their hands. I'm like, well, my goodness, I've had death threats in the spirit. I've had death threats in the natural. At one time I was driving uh, back. I was just about ready to drive back from, from a restaurant in Missouri. And I'd been taping the Jim Baker show. And, and I was uh, with, uh, driving back with a group of people. I wasn't driving. And the devil said, I'm going to kill you before you get home. I'm going to kill you before you get back to that condo, before you get back to your place of rest. I'm going to kill you. And I said, huh? No, you're not devil. Are you trying to intimidate me? Trying to, to cause me to give up, trying to get me into fear? See, if you open the door to fear, you're opening the door to the devil. So you know what I did? I texted uh, my intercessor and I said, sound the alarm. The devil just told me that he's going to kill me before I get back to the condo. And she rallied the troops and they actually stayed and prayed until I was safely back in the condo. I then have one iota of fear. Fear opens the door. It's an access point uh, to the enemy. Uh, but the, the spirit of Jezebel 
working through people. You'll see some of this uh, in churches. You'll see it in the marketplace. You'll see it in families. Uh, you'll see uh, this spirit running rampant in the church and the spirit of religion. You see, the spirit of Jezebel threatened Elijah. Remember that? The spirit of Jezebel, well, the, the queen Jezebel, but there was a spirit on her that we call Jezebel. Queen Jezebel, when she saw that Elijah was taking a stand for righteousness, when she saw that Elijah had killed all the prophets, uh, there, was, uh, there was hundreds of prophets that Elijah killed. Uh, when she saw this happen, you would think she might want to repent. You would think she might want to, you know, maybe change her tune. Oh, but no, she sent a messenger to speak to Elijah, to threaten Elijah, to release a word curse at Elijah. She said to Elijah, may the gods do this to me and more also if your head is not like one of theirs by this time tomorrow. In other words, I'm going to kill you, Elijah. This was an escalated threat. This was a big time threat. Jezebel threatened him and the Bible says when he saw it, now, I'm pretty sure that the messenger didn't carry a little picture board and begin to, to draw out a picture of Elijah being killed. No, he had a vain imagination. When Elijah, when, uh, when she released this curse through a messenger, he began to imagine it so. What happened? He began to run. He began to flee. He ran and, and was under a juniper tree and said, Lord, just let me die. Take my life. Uh, this spirit of give up, uh, this spirit of quit uh, came upon him and he wanted to throw in the towel. I tell you, it was an escalated threat. It was an escalated threat. I don't know how many other threats he'd endured. Many times prophets do endure threats. Here's the thing though, the religious spirit also releases threats. Also, think about Jesus. They were always trying to trap him. They always were organizing against him. Uh, they always were questioning him and debating with him, uh, trying to set him up. And, and, and behind the scenes, they were trying to find a way to actually murder him. And they finally did. The, remember Peter and, 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 and John, uh, they healed the man in the name of Jesus at the gate beautiful. And they were arrested. It's in the book of Acts. They were arrested. And, and they were taken in by the scribes and the Pharisees and they were threatened. They were threatened. They were threatened several times. Do not speak anymore in this name. And Peter said, whether it is right for us to obey God or man, you decide, but we're going to keep doing what God's called us to do. See, we've got to be people who are not, who are not moved by the threats, by these spirits or by people. We must not be moved by the threats because if the enemy can move you off your course by a threat, then he'll keep on threatening you and you will live in terror and you will live in fear. I'm telling you, there are Christian witches rising up. Let me go back to what I was saying in the beginning. I thought for sure that the Lord was showing me witches like warlocks and witches because I've had these attacks in the past. No, 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 no. Within about a week, I had the answer to one of the witches and it was a Christian witch. What do I mean by that? How can you be a Christian and a witch? I mean, a, a believer, a believer in Jesus who is tapping into witchcraft. And I saw this because this one particular one had given me an item, maybe a year or two ago, had given me a certain item. And, and, and before I'd gone to Dallas, before the Lord told me that a witch uh, had, um, uh, had, had, witches had targeted me, I, 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 I found this item that this Christian lady gave to me. And, and, and the Lord said, throw that away. And I'm like, well, why? I never, I never, it was just sort of put in a drawer. I never had it. He said, throw that away. So I threw it away. Witches will give you things that are a point of contact. They'll give you, if you have, we had a lady come in our, our ministry one time and she left uh, uh, this red rag in, in, in this little canister. She said, the Lord just wants me to give this to you. It's an anointing oil and it's, and it's a prayer cloth. Well, I stuck it in my pocket, didn't think anything about it. And all of a sudden I came under such witchcraft, such demonic attack. I'm like, what is this? I called a friend in Perry, Florida. And I said, what is going on? He says, the Lord shows me a red piece of string. I'm like, what are you talking about? It was that red cloth that was in my pocket. And it was still in my jeans that were in the laundry bin. I still had possession. It's a point of contact. So the Lord told me, get rid of this item. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I got rid of it. Now I go to Dallas. The Lord says, there's been witches assigned to you. I come back home about a week later. I go to a conference. And there was such witchcraft coming against my mind. I'm like, my gosh, what is this? And the Lord showed me through another person, just all by coincidence. See, the, the Lord always exposes. The Lord showed me that there was uh, these, uh, this certain group of people that they are Christians, but they had uh, engaged in an unholy fast. 
Jezebel engaged in an, she called an unholy fast. We see this in the Bible. It's a, it's a fast for nefarious purposes. Here's the thing. What is a witchcraft prayer? How can a Christian release witchcraft? Well, you know, word curses is a form of witchcraft, but there's also witchcraft prayers. So when you pray your will instead of the Lord's will, it's witchcraft. When you're praying against, when, you, when, you're, when you're saying, Lord, remove them from that position. Lord, divide these relationships. Lord, when you're doing these things, you are praying witchcraft. And so I had come under assault by these witches that had targeted me and were trying to uh, tear me down, were trying to uh, ruin my relationships. And why? Why? I still don't know the motive. I, 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 I don't even know uh, who these people are, uh, but the Lord exposed to me uh, that there was this, uh, uh, almost, I want to say a coven. It's probably not the right term. It is a, it's a coven of witches, but there are Christian witches. I don't even know that they're really Christian. See, there's a lot of people in the in, in churches that are not Christian. Did you know that? Just because you are in a car in, in a garage doesn't make you a car. I get I go in garages all the time. I'm not a car. So just because you come into church doesn't make you a Christian. And what I'm finding is is that uh, these word curses uh, they, they, they 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 break they break in the name of Jesus. So what I want to do, I want to pray for you in just a moment to break word curses and witchcraft. And I want you to be aware. Uh, why are so many Christians practicing witchcraft? You can type that in Google and type my name and read the article. You know, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. It's, 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 it's compared to witchcraft in the Bible. And works of flesh can also be witchcraft. So when we get in our flesh about a thing, we can release witchcraft. Most of the time, we'll release witchcraft at ourselves. We don't have to worry about other people doing it. We do it with the words of our mouth. Amen? But I want to warn you that in this season... And you, you don't have to know who they are. I don't know who all these people are, but there's more than one. And they've, they've, they're, 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 they've banded together. Why? Usually it's out of, it, the threats come out of anger. Threats come out of anger. Someone is angry with you, so they threaten you. And I don't know why I'm such a loving, kind, wonderful person. I get up at, at you know, and pray for you all at 6 a.m. every day. I don't know why people want to curse me. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know, but they're angry for some reason. But see, you have people in your life that are like that too many times. Sometimes you run into them, not all the time, but sometimes. And so I want you to, uh, to, to be, if you've been feeling exhausted, if you've been feeling confused, if you've been feeling like people are turning against you that used to walk with you and you don't understand why, see, the, the Jezebel releases, it's 2 Kings 9, the Bible speaks of Jezebel and her witchcrafts. So this spirit of Jezebel will release witchcraft against us. And so these are Jezebelic Christians. You can see, here's the thing. You can be a Christian and still, and still come under the influence of a spirit. You've seen Christians who are depressed, right? And some of these Christians that are depressed, they're, it, it, it's not, uh, it, it's not a, a, a chemical imbalance or just a bad season. Sometimes it's a spirit. You see Christians come up under a spirit of fear, don't you? You see Christians come up under a spirit of rejection, right? So in just that same way, they can come up under the spirit of Jezebel and yield to it and begin to do the bidding of the enemy. We know that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but that the enemy does use flesh and blood against us. So I want to pray for you. I want this assignment to break. And if you've not seen this yet, bless God, plead the blood of Jesus over yourself and continue to stand and withstand because you never know uh, when it's going to be your turn. I want to remind you that my prayer, uh, my mentoring and prayer and intercession program is available to you. You can go to schoolofthespirit.tv and check that out. If you're, if, a, if you're a member of the Ignite Network, you can get a discount on that program. It's very affordable. I'm sharing my heart, sharing my time. The Lord told me in 2012 to make prayer my life's work. And that's what I want to do for you right now. I want to pray. Many times we don't know how to pray as we ought. Many times we beg God when we should be standing boldly before his throne of grace, asking for what we need, not begging, but asking. I want to pray for you right now. Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Spirit of God. I thank you, Lord, that the curse causeless shall not come, it shall not stand. It may come, it may come, but it shall not stand. I thank you, Lord, that we are seated in heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers. We are seated in Christ. We have victory in you. 
Lord, we take authority. I take authority over every word curse, hex, vex, spell, incantation, a potion, and every expression of witchcraft that is plaguing your people in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I just see somebody that's that's watching me. I see you in the spirit, and it's like I, I just see you. Uh, just it's almost like you're carrying such a heavy load you can barely move forward any longer. And this witchcraft on you is going to have to break now in Jesus' name. I command it to break now in the name of the Lord. No more. I plead the blood of Jesus over you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I decree and declare no weapon formed against you shall prosper, but every tongue shall that rises up against you shall be condemned. I thank you, Lord, that you rise up and defeat our enemies for us because the battle is yours. Give us your strategy, Lord, for the days ahead to defeat the Jezebel and religion's escalating threats against us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen, I got to go. I've been filming all day long for a brand new TV series, and I'm doing 13 episodes on the spirit of Jezebel. It's going to be good. I'll be back with you soon. Bless you.